Hey guys, this is Jeff from Rick Robotics, and today I'm going to show you how I built this awesome brain in the jar project. This video is a little bit lengthy, so grab a snack, sit back, and enjoy the ride. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. So the first thing we need is a brain, of course. So I 3D printed mine. There are some products in Halloween stores and such, but I decided to 3D print this. This is not my design. I found it on Thingiverse, and I'm going to link that file in the description below. It prints in two halves, and they each took around 20 hours to print. You can see I have some bad resolution lines on there, and I've tried to sand a lot of that down. In general, I think it looks okay. And it's going to work for this project because it is going to be covered in water and paint and everything else. So it should look okay. I had to sand down the inside a little bit, which we aren't going to be seeing much of, just so that they would line up right. There's no keys or anything to hold them together, so we'll have to find a way to stick them together. The second half turned out much better. I think I gave a better resolution on the second half. But anyway, I ran over it with some sandpaper just to smooth it out. And now we're going to hit it with some primer and see how well it paints. And if that looks okay after it's primered, then we can move on. So let's get started with that. So here they are, I got them primered, but as you can see, getting in those cracks can be incredibly hard with the primer. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with that, if I'm gonna do another coat or not, but I think maybe I should. So I'll hit that with one more coat of primer and then we'll get on to painting it. So I went ahead and put one more coat of primer on here and I think it looks a lot better. Uh, there's still a couple of spots that need just a little bit of tidying up, but really I think the primer set on here really well. I noticed a couple of spots where I didn't get all of the uh, support material out of there yet, so I'll just pick that out really quick. The primer really helps show all that, so I'll take care of that, and then I'll go ahead and put the paint on. All right, so now we have our brain painted one layer of pink, and I'm really pretty satisfied with the way this looks. It's got a nice, fleshy, pink, brainy color on it. It's not perfect, so it does obviously need more paint. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Uh, for now, the next step, we're going to go ahead and connect the two halves together, and I'm just gonna do that with some hot glue. And in the meantime, I'm going to use one of these wooden dowels. And what we'll do is put the dowel in the middle of the brain, glue it together, and have kind of a brain popsicle so that we can move the brain around and even mount it without touching the next few layers of paint. Once that's done, we can trim off whatever we don't need of the wood and use that as part of the mount to hold the brain in the jar. So I've just put the brain onto a little wood block right there and that should help stand it up while I'm painting it. That way I can twist it around without really touching the brain at all. So uh, the glue is dried. Let's take it outside and put another coat of paint on it. So our brain is looking really good right now. Of course, it is missing a couple of features. So obviously we need the brain stem yet, but before we do that, I think we're going to add a couple of eyeballs. So, let's... 
Oh, that is going to look so cool. All right, we're going to put some RGB LEDs in here and get them wired up. And then we'll put the eyeballs in here and make ourselves a brainstem that connects everything together. I somehow lost the footage of me constructing these eyeballs, but these 26 millimeter eyeballs are made of acrylic and they're the same ones that I use for my Genesis project. I simply mounted an LED in there and ran the wires through the hole provided in the back. And then I added some heat shrink tubing in order to provide a good seal for the eyes. All right, so we have our eyeballs here connected and ready to go. So let's just see how these are going to look. Yeah, and they'll just kind of be dangling about there, looking around. So what we'll do is take the brain, we're gonna turn it upside down here. We'll take our eyeballs and mount them in like that. And then we'll just put some glue around here and continue building our brain stem from where we added the first bit of hot glue earlier. And then once that's done, we can build down on our brain stem and have a complete brain and it'll be ready to go in our jar. I have a fish tank tube here that we can blow some air through. And what we'll do is run this also through the brain stem so that when the eyes change colors and the tank turns different colors, we can uh, blow some bubbles and that might give a little bit of character to our design. So to detail our brain, I'm going to add just a few little blood vessels and veins. And what I'll do for that, I think, is use some blue and some red. And I've got several colors. Got this neon blue, I'm not sure how that's gonna look, and this red apple. I'm really not an expert at doing this, so I'm gonna play it by ear. I'm not gonna make it overly dramatic. I'm just gonna give a couple little lines in there and try to fill in some of the little cracks and ridges and see how that looks. Here we are, and I've done what I can for painting this. I didn't want to overdo it. And to be honest, I'm not really sure that I like the way that this looks. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. It doesn't look bad, I guess, and I think it'll look a little better once I get some more um, features put onto it, which we're gonna get to next. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next step and see if I can live with this. Now we're going to move on and do the brain stem. We've built some eyes here for it and they are going to mount under here like so. We'll use a little bit of tubing here to blow bubbles through the water and we'll use some of this uh, elastic cord that I found at Walmart. I'm going to be just be using the pink here and we're going to use those for some danglies and we'll hot glue it all together and kind of build the structure as we go. So I'm gonna stop here just for a second to show you this. I've ran this piece of tube through here for the center and I noticed that as the glue gets hot, it does sort of collapse the tube. I tested it and it still works pretty well. But what I think I'm gonna do is run a couple more tubes here. That way I have some backups in case one of them does get plugged. And I can also uh, do a couple alternating bubble schemes. I'll take this 
section of tube and then just kind of Y it out into here and I'll build that up with the glue. Also, when we're going to go ahead and build the brain stem, we're gonna have some wires coming out of it. And I think what I'm gonna use for the brain stem is just this wire harness that I got out of an old computer power supply. So I'll kind of put that down here and wire that into the hot glue and build up the brain stem around there. That will also add a little bit of extra bulk in the brain stem so that I don't have to use 100% glue in there. And then you'll see me use this pink cordage as well to give it a little bit of uh, dangly fibrous look. Okay, so most of our gluing is done for our aesthetic wires and this is just for show so none of this has to be connected but I've built up a bit of a brain stem here with hot glue in these wires and then for our nerve ending cordage um, what I did was just bundled all of this up and then cut the ends off of it I used some rubber bands and just kind of connected it all together and then I'll hot glue all of that in there and then I can remove the rubber bands and hopefully that in the water with the bubbles this will just kind of twist and dangle around and look like it's looking for its home so I think this is turning out okay and then we'll put a little bit of paint on here and touch that up and then it will look like a brain okay so I've basically just masked off everything I don't want painted here and the purpose of this is to give a little bit of contrast paint on here for the mandula oblongata here, the brain stem. Um, so I'm just gonna be painting this here a different shade of pink. For this, I'm gonna go with uh, this gloss mambo pink. And we're just gonna try to hit this stuff here and get that a little bit painted up and hopefully none of it will leak onto the rest of the brain. I've actually taped everything up so that that doesn't get hurt. So anyway, let's give this a coat of paint and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've just taken off the masking for this. I painted it and it looked pretty good. There are some spots where the paint kind of leaked underneath here, and you can kind of see that. But I don't know if I'm even really going to touch that up because you're going to be viewing the brain from uh, like this angle here. So I don't think you're really going to see it unless you try to look up underneath it. So I think that's actually pretty good. I do like the way that it turned out, though. It's got a really nice contrast where you have the light pink and the dark pink there. So I think this is going to look really neat. So I've decided to go with this particular container for the brain. It is a some type of a beverage container I found at Walmart. I believe it is about $20. And we can see here, lid comes off. It has this cone or something. We're going to get rid of that. We'll take out the paper here. The thing I like about this container is that it comes apart pretty easy. So we have these two pieces of tape. And you can see it separates really well. We have this bottom section here. So all that we really need to do is take off this nozzle here, uh, which should just unscrew. We can plug this hole here and we can do something for the bottom and do something for the top and set the brain right inside of there. So let's go ahead and remove this and find out how we can plug it. I'm not going to get rid of these pieces just yet. I'm actually going to hold on to them. We might be able to uh, cut off a section here and use this as a conduit that goes right through the jar. And also, if nothing else, we might be able to use these rings as some type of seal or something like that. So we're going to need to make a little modification to the lid of this jar. As you can see, we have this 
piece here that comes down. What we're gonna do is just trim this right off at the top and we will use this hacksaw to do it. So I actually cut this off really unevenly. Maybe I should have put it on the bandsaw instead, but I didn't. So note for the future. I think what I'm gonna do is take this outside and put it on the belt sander and try to grind that out. For our base section, I think I'm gonna use some EVA foam. So I have this piece already cut out and I didn't cut this to match this yet. It's actually an extra piece that I had laying around of an old project, but as you can see, it's pretty close to the right size. So I think I'm gonna start with that. So as you can see, this doesn't quite reach all the way around. And what I think I'll do is start with that smaller piece and either use this as some type of a window for maybe uh, electronics or something cool inside there, or else I'll just cut an additional strip to uh, fill that little gap. So I think I'm gonna start working on it just, just with this piece and cut this to size and wrap it around there and see how it looks. So our bevel has been sanded down. It looks pretty good. It might need a little of fine tuning, but I think that's going to be okay. I also tried to smooth out the edges as best as possible. So what we'll do is just wrap this around here. Line that up with the bottom of the jar. That should fit around there. It helps to get this shape right if you kind of roll this up first. See, and that will make it stay. And I just kind of do that on both sides. There we go. Now we have a nice circular shape. So this fits around here pretty well. And I think I like the look of this. It might be just a little bit too high, but we can cut that down if we need to. What we're going to do next is fasten this down and maybe tack it on here with some tape or hot glue. And then we can put some glue or PVA onto it and start painting. For now, I've just added some duct tape just to hold this down here. But I think what we should do is hot glue it to keep it to the actual base and that way it'll be a little easier to work with. I've just got some clamps on here now and a piece of wood to make sure there's no bad dents in it from the clamp pressure. And that should hold the glue to the foam while it dries. So I'm going to use some of this glue here and it's just called Tight Bond Premium Wood Glue. It's a lot like Elmer's glue and the generic version of it is called PVA. I use that uh, as well. So we're going to go ahead and use this. Uh, just quick note, this is water resistant. I'm sure you could use the non-water resistant too. Um, I haven't tested it, but I believe they'll probably perform the same. So we'll go ahead and just pour a little bit of it. You really don't need that much into one of these containers, just barely covering the bottom there. And then we'll apply it with a foam brush. Just spread that on real liberal. And then just coat all the way around it. Don't worry if you miss just a little bit, 
you can go back and redo it here. We're gonna be applying uh, several layers. I think we're gonna do three layers because in my test, three layers worked out really well. Five worked out even better, but honestly, there wasn't that big of a difference that you needed that many more. And we're gonna go ahead and let that dry and then we'll apply another coat. So now for the fun part, we're going to be adding some greeblies. If you aren't familiar with the term greebly, it is uh, a term that was actually coined by George Lucas when he was talking to his prop designers about the little bits and pieces that kind of just stick out and add character to the ships and weapons and suits and things like that that they were creating for Star Wars. So in this case, these are a lot of scrap pieces that I've just kept. So unfortunately, if you guys are following along and wanted to build an exact copy of what I'm doing, these parts will not be available on the instructional or in the files in this video. And the simple reason for that is because these, a lot of them are just pieces that I've cut off of other pieces or that I printed maybe five years ago and threw in a drawer. So it, Rather than digging out all of these files to find you a little tiny circle like this, it would be easy enough to just go to Thingiverse, which I will link, and show you some of the greeblies that other creators have used for their projects. Here are just some other alternatives to 3D printed greeblies. If you didn't want to do that, you can use foam core, and this is really popular among makers. It's very inexpensive and easy to work with. You can use other EVA foam, and I use this out of the really thin sheets of EVA foam, and I just cut out these little pieces here. Another great source is old circuit boards from different projects, maybe something that you built before or something that you took apart just to try to fix or something. And you can use these just as they are, they don't have to work, obviously, and you can paint them or cut them into smaller pieces. This was cut out of a larger section of something. I don't even remember what that's from. So basically, I'm going to let my imagination run wild. Let's go ahead and add some of these to our project. In order to deal with these edges here, I could try to fill in this gap with another piece of EVA foam, but unless you're really a wizard at working at this EVA foam, you're gonna have some really unclean edges. And we could spend a lot of time trying to clean this up and make it look real nice. And I'm sure there's good methods to do that if we wanted this perfectly round. But I think what I'm going to do instead is try to accent the edges a little bit by building up a compartment in the back of it that looks like it might house some type of electronics or something like that. And we're going to build that compartment out of foam core. And foam core is really easy to work with. It's really easy to cut and draw on, and it's very inexpensive. So if I mess this up, I can always go out to my local Walmart and pick up some more. Okay, so we've got our basic shape here. Um, I think I made a little mistake in the dimensions, but that's gonna be fixed really easy. I think I made it just a little too long on an edge. But what we'll do now is just go ahead and use some hot glue and start tacking it together. And then we'll see how that looks on the piece. And then we'll just build up from there. So I went pretty heavy on the hot glue there, but that should stick everything together. And that should be the basic structure of our compartment. We'll go ahead and put this on here for comparison. Now we'll have to do a little bit of cutting to make all of this fit around there just right.
So I think I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off here and add some other components. And then we'll attach it to the base and get it painted. Okay, so I've just added some Greeblies onto here and basically I just wanted to make this look a little like a control panel. So I just placed them wherever I thought they looked kind of neat and I used some foam core for this section here and I think it looks okay like that. So I didn't want it to look overly complex, but I wanted to make it look like there's uh, some functionality to it and something's going on. So let's get these glued down and then we can paint it. The last step before we paint this there's a couple of edges here that I'm really not happy with. So I think what I'm going to do to seal some of these gaps is try to use a little bit of spackling. And this should stick to it. We'll give it a little layer on there and see if that works. And if it doesn't, then we'll have to come up with something else. So let's give this a shot. So I just let this dry for a while and gave it a rough sanding. The edges look pretty good right now. So I think what I'm going to do is take it out and give it a quick shot of primer and then start painting it and see how it looks. If we need to add a little bit more uh, spackle to fill it in, then we can do that. But I think this is going to turn out okay just the way it looks. I've got my Greeblies all placed on this here where I think I want them. I've done a little bit of experimenting. So here's kind of my general scheme for them. My idea was that it all kind of has wires connecting to these imaginary components. This will be the panel on the back. So everything runs right into there. So it looks like everything is all kind of being connected to that. I've also printed out all of these on my printer. And what these are are M6 bolt heads. And I've got about 20 of them in here. Oops. I've got about 20 of them in here. And I didn't want to tape each one of these individually down. But I think what I'll do is kind of dot these around the edge so it looks like it's all bolted on and I'll just do that as I go. So this turned out all right. Um, just one coat of primer on here. I used kind of a extra thick gray primer on here. And I think our next step is going to be to paint it. And for the color we're using is this metallic aluminum. So it's uh, Rust-Oleum paint. Found it at Walmart. Let's give it a shot. So while this base is pretty much done here, um, I have been looking at it and a couple things that I'm going to change. Uh, first of all, the back side here came out a little bit rough with the foam core. I am not really that good at finishing it apparently and I've tried a couple times, it 
looks okay, but thankfully it'll be on the back, so a lot of this will be hidden. Um, also, I realized a slight missed opportunity here. So, as you look at this, you have something that looks kind of like a little control panel or a display or something like that. And this is just about perfect to hold an RGB LED. So I think what I'm going to do is use this little RGB LED that came off the strip and I'm going to go ahead and just mount this right in there or actually it'll be mounted in the back here. Let's see if I can show you here. So I think I'll mount it right in the back there and then maybe try to cover this with some hot glue so it'll kind of diffuse it a little bit and that way we can have a little bit of lighting on the bottom here too and this is going to be a really easy fix all that i'm going to do is drill that hole out there and use this drill and then we'll mount that glue it and wire it So I'm going to secure this LED down with just a piece of duct tape. I maybe could glue it down, but I don't know if I can get hot glue in there and I'd rather not risk damaging it. So we'll just stick it with duct tape and hopefully that will work. There we go. So I went ahead and just duct taped little sections of the wire here and ran it through the bottom of the back here and then if we turn it over we have the wires coming out here and I used a solid wire just to pull the wires a little easier. You might notice that I have a green wire here and this is to stay unconnected and that is running to the D out pin of the LED here and this just makes it a little easier if in the future I want to add more LEDs in the same string that I can go ahead and just extend onto this wire and run the signal right out from that so I don't have to start a whole new chain. I don't need positive and negative because you can grab the plus and minus from any point in the electronics. So for the top section we're going to do it pretty much like the bottom section. So there is a slight bit of geometry we have to work around here. Nothing too serious, but we have this hole which represents the uh, center of the container on the bottom. And we're going to put that in the back. And then the top gets screwed down and clips onto these little hooks here. So what we're going to want is ultimately that these uh, flaps will be... Um, centered right. So we have to make sure that we account for all of this. Um, what we're going to do is use some PVA foam and go around the top and build this up just a little higher than the top. That way we have room for electronics and such. And what we'll do is make it stick out just slightly further than the edge so that we can have a little bit of room to twist the top off if we need to get to it. Um, so I've beveled this edge here just like the bottom section and we're going to put that around here and we'll wrap this all the way around and we'll just account for this by cutting a little notch in it. Before we get to that what we'll do is build up the top just a little bit so we have something to actually glue our foam onto. We'll take just a spare piece of EVA foam and glue that to the top of the container. We'll just glue to the top around here and that way we can actually offset the foam uh, on the edge of it so that we have enough space to ultimately mount 
the real piece uh, to the edge of it. So let's go ahead and glue this down and we can see this come together. So I've got the structure done for our top piece here and I've left just kind of a little ridge here so that when I put the top of it on it, it won't exactly touch the bottom of that. And the reason for that is because we're going to be using this LED strip and we're going to wrap that around the inside of this and that should illuminate that. And I wanted to make sure there's sufficient clearance for that. So I brought that out maybe about a quarter of an inch. For our LED strip, what we'll do is attach it directly to the jar so that the LEDs make contact with the glass here, or plastic. And as you can see, the lid of the jar will just come up and be removable without the LED strip having to touch that. And I've decided to go that way because when the LEDs will make contact with it, it should help diffuse the light a little bit better rather than if it was out a little bit because of the foam on the top of the jar. I've cut a strip of 20 LEDs and that goes just about all the way around here. And I will leave a little spot in the back. And then most of these come with a plug that can just be attached to the circuitry on the top of the unit here. And these last two are for powering it, if that is what you wanted to do. I'm going to actually just leave the tape on here. Um, this is the adhesive tape that comes with it. And really this isn't all that good unless there's really no pressure either way from the LED strips. So what I'm gonna do instead is just use some duct tape. Now this duct tape is a little thick, so what I'm going to do is just cut about uh, a strip about halfway through it and we'll go ahead and use that and press that right against the LED strips. That way it's a little less permanent too because if I wanted to adjust it or maybe diffuse the LEDs, if I needed to remove the strip for some reason later, then I could do that simply by removing the duct tape instead of trying to fight hot glue or adhesive or something like that. So that's what we'll do. Now we're going to go ahead and glue the top of this down onto this piece of EVA foam. I accidentally cut a slit on the wrong side of it, so I did another one, but we can fix this. So this slot should line up just like that. And that fits right in there. And then we should be able to glue right around it. So I just went ahead and cut an additional piece of EVA foam here and sanded it all down. That should work for the back and there are going to be some gaps in the edges but I'm going to try to seal that with some spackle, some glue and some, um, some paint and primer so hopefully that will turn out okay. So I've done a little patchwork on the top here and I tried to fill this hole with uh, the little piece that I cut out of the EVA foam and then on the back I went ahead and did that uh, this back section here to fill in this gap which is exactly why I didn't want to do this on the bottom because I had a feeling I would get something really nasty looking like this. Uh, this side turned out slightly better but it's still really not acceptable and I'm going to attribute this to my inexperience working with this type of foam. I'm sure that as I work a little more with it, it will get a little nicer looking. But anyway, I have to find a way to fix this. So I've uh, come up with a couple of different strategies 
first thing I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand this down and try to clean up the really rough edges. And I might uh, use a little bit of the plaster in here and then glue it and see if I can keep a smooth edge. So I just went over this here with this type of file here. I believe this is called a rasp. Um, it's a very coarse file and that took the edges off here. It gave it kind of a rough finish, but that kind of made it look a little bit better. It certainly smoothed that down. So I think what I'll do here is just go ahead and cover this with the wood glue and we'll see if that that works. I might put a little bit of plaster in here as well and we might not need the extra piece of EVA foam. Okay, so I've done one layer of spackle on this and it actually looked promising but not perfect. So I've laid down another layer on here and I'm going to smooth all that out. I know this looks really rough right now, but trust me, the uh, finished product will probably actually look okay. You still might be able to see some of the seams when I get done, but I think it's going to be uh, very salvageable. So I've done this twice now and I've put the spackle in here and it really does look pretty smooth. I've given it a couple sandings on here. So I'm getting pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to leave that the way it is. One noticeable thing is there is a slight crack in here and I don't know how well that's going to show. I've also cut down the top about two inches. So here's what I've taken off of it. It used to sit about like that and I just felt like the top was going to be too tall compared to the rest of the project. So I took off a little bit. Also, I've cut the top here. Uh, and this is going to fit on top of here and we're going to make something that will hold it all so it locks in place here. But with that on top of there, I think that's going to be just about the right height. Also, with our main electronics here, um, it should fit into here just about right and have just a slight bit of clearance so we can go ahead and push something out of that as well. Anyway, I think this is where we're going to stay as far as finishing this. And I'm going to go ahead and glue around this and start getting ready to paint. So let's get that started and then reevaluate how it looks after that. I have 3D printed this nice little cover for the electronics that will make a nice control panel so before I put on our first coat of primer to this I will install that and all we need to do is just cut down a little slot to fit that into there I've just got a little section here marked out of where I need to cut and I'm gonna go ahead and start with this coping saw here and see if that will work I'm using the utility knives here. I definitely messed this up. Uh, definitely a case of measure twice, cut once. I thought that I had enough room when I cut this out that I'd have clearance for this or maybe just a little less. But I looked at this wrong. So this is where it should be is this line and you can see how far up it's sticking. And you can see it's on this lip right here. And I can't take this lip off. If I did that, then I wouldn't be able to latch it um, onto the jar itself. So I need to find a workaround for this. This will still go in here. I'm not going to put that piece back. What I had originally planned was to use this lid and cover this. Now I'm thinking maybe I should cut a slot into here to fit this on there and make that part of it. I'm not sure how that's going to look. So anyway, I have to think this out. I really made a mistake here and I feel stupid. So um, I'm going to fix this and I'm not going to film it because there's going to be a lot of trial and error. So what I'll do is I'll get it fixed and I'll come back. And the next thing you guys will see is my solution. So, so after about 
two days of reworking this thing here. This is what I came up with. I basically covered the whole thing with spackle and sanded it down and covered it and sanded it, covered it and sanded it. Um, you got about, I don't know, maybe six or seven layers on here. Uh, there are still some kind of iffy spots on here. And that's my own mistake. This could have looked a lot better, but I really do want to get this out in time for Halloween. So if you're watching this before Halloween 2018, then great, I made it. So anyway, uh, this is the spackle that I'm using. And on here it says to focus this. It allows for 24 hours of drying time. I waited about two to three hours between drying times and I used a hair dryer and that works if it's really thin layers on some of the thick stuff like around here that doesn't work very well and it kind of chips so anyway I did that and I also cut an additional ring of uh, foam here I think the natural uh, option would have been just to add the old piece that I cut off back on but then I'd still have that whole ridge around here to deal with and I was going to do something like this anyway, so I thought I'd just go ahead and incorporate that in there. And this looks okay, and it is pretty solid. So I think our electronics will mount in here, and this will look pretty good. What we'll do after that is take the top piece that I had originally planned and set that on there. My next step is to go ahead and cover this with some glue, and then go ahead and primer it, paint it, and stuff it with electronic goodies. I wanted to just review the electronics real quick for you here. It is AC and DC powered. So let's discuss the AC section first. So we have the power cord, which goes into a AC power switch. Everything is modular here, so I can unplug these pieces here and, and unplug this entirely if I needed to work on each section. This is a 5 volt, 1.2 amp wall wart. It may be slightly underpowered, but I'm only using 23 LEDs. So I think that this will be all right for the current. The AC goes into the AC side of the relay, which is on the normally open circuit here. I can put it on normally closed, which would be the bottom one. These relay modules are actually very cheap and they're easy to find online. I will leave a link to that. The relay goes in to the fish tank pump and obviously the pump pushes air into the system. Now for the DC side, we have a five volt DC connection here and that will go into our Arduino prototyping shield, which I've used here as a breakout board. So once that is powered, that will go uh, power and control the relay and also connect to our LED strip. Our LED strips are right here and these are RGB LED strips. They have three terminal connections here. Wait till that focuses. All right, you should be able to see there's a five volt uh, D in or D out depending on which side you look at and the ground. And basically we just need the five volts to power that and then a uh, signal pin. The Arduino shield is kind of sandwiched between the Arduino, I'm using an Arduino Uno, and the Arduino Uno goes on the bottom of that, like so. And then we have an Arduino LCD shield. And the shield also plugs right in, so we have kind of a stack of three there. This Arduino LCD shield comes with six buttons. It has a select, a left, right, down, up, and a reset button right on the device here. So we should be able to have some pretty good control. It also has a potentiometer that controls the backlight on the LCD. To add a few bubbles to our brain, we're gonna be using this fish tank aerator. I got it at Walmart and it's about $4 or something like that. I can try to link that in the description if I can find it on Walmart's website. And uh, it's, think it's gonna do the job just fine but we do need to make a couple quick modifications to it including uh, snipping part of the cord off so we can connect it to our Arduino so I just made a little bit of a cut here in one side of the wire and left the other one undamaged and 
I didn't remove any of the wire, I just removed some of the sheathing for that and then that will go into our relay. From where we mounted our relay here, I'm gonna cut off about eight inches of cord here and that's about the same distance between our relay and our pump. And now I'll go ahead and strip both ends of these wires here. I am gonna go ahead and just take a spare external power supply out of my box of spares here. And this is rated at five volts, 1.2 amps. That should power what we have for our LEDs pretty well. After a little bit of coaxing, I finally got the power supply taken apart and now we can get into modifying it. We'll start by disconnecting these wires that connect the line voltage and then these wires that are the five volt out and we're just going to replace these here in the next step. From our power cord section of the line, I'm gonna go ahead and cut another section of this wire out, maybe about three or four inches away from where we just trimmed these wires, and then I'll go ahead and strip both of those ends as well. Now we'll insert this into the line side of our power supply again. So what I've done first was I soldered these straight through the board here and left enough wire between the board and the insulation that I could wrap the other wires around there. So now I have a two channel split and this will go to the pump and the relay and this goes into the, the line power supply and it will power this board, which will power the Arduino. I'm gonna go ahead and use these spade connectors to connect the, the power supply to the pump, and this way it will be a good insulation. So these work just like this. You put one into the other, and they connect without shorting at all. So one will go on one end, and one will go on the other end. So now I've just taped up everything in the power supply. I've used the original case again because why well, build another one when you have a perfectly good one to start with? And my modifications are done. This should work. All right, so this actually is looking a lot better. I've got about four layers of the glue on here and I just have a little bit of cleanup to do on this, but I think this is going to work for us and it's actually looking really smooth and really nice. And I thought I'd just show you how I'm gonna mount the electronics quick. So my first intention was to take the LCD and the Arduino shield and then the Arduino itself and put them all in one continuous block right back here, which should work. And that will just sit in there like that. Then we'll take our fish tank pump and set that in one of these compartments down here. And then our relay, uh, it does have the mains voltage on it, so I'm gonna actually cover this with some electrical tape before I do any mounting of that. I'll put that in one of these pockets here. Then our power brick, we can also set in one of these. So all of these just kind of fit pretty nice in all of these. I didn't talk about this yet, but I cut a hole here for a switch, which will just fit right in there. I'm not gonna push it in there just yet because it might not come out right. Um, it's got these little clips here that hold it in, but that will sit right in there. And then another hole here for our power cord. And then I'll take our top piece and put that on here and that will cover everything. And what I'll do in here is put some type of a keyed geometric shape 
that I will copy onto the top of here as well. So it will be like uh, two slots that one fits into the other and that will keep it in one spot right there. And I'll find some way to make this look nice too. My next step is I'm going to add some greeblies onto this and give this a little bit of character. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is what I came up with for greeblies on this top section. I went a little easier than on the bottom. So I did the bolts like normal and I added these little strips for some venting. And I just kinda used a couple little rings and dots here and there. And over here we have this little uh, exclamation point looking gizmo and some more vents over here. So I didn't think the top needed to be quite as complex as the bottom simply because we already have real electronics in here. I'm going to go ahead and do one last coat of glue on there and prime it and then we can finally paint this and add some electronics. I've also come up with something for the lid like I talked about earlier. Uh, so this is basically just a triangle and it's very uh, unsymmetrical so it's only going to fit one way and this will go in here and I'll just attach that in there and then this piece here will attach to the lid that way the lid won't obviously go in any other way but it will slip in just perfect like that and easy to remove so that way I can key the lid to sit just exactly how I want it to. I'm gonna wait until I have this all painted before I actually install this because I want to put the electronics in there and make sure that this isn't blocking anything. Let's go ahead and finish the gluing, get the primer done, and then we can finally finish the look of this piece. So here it is painted and I've painted the inside of it too that way uh, it will hopefully be like a mirrored finish on the bottom I haven't yet removed the masking but we'll look at that in a second this paint I'm pretty impressed with it dries really fast it's only been about 10 minutes since I painted this and it's already completely dry so it should sit something like this the edge looks a little rough on here and I'm wondering if I need to refinish this I'll probably end up damaging it but I might actually hit this with some sandpaper and try to finish that edge a little better I've got all of my electronics positioned in here now so it's a little hard to see but I've got my main controller here with the Arduino the shield and the LCD back here and then here's the fish tank pump our power bricks sits right here and for now, our relay just kind of dangles there. I don't know if you can see that, but there we go. And then these will be plugged into the relay AC port. And then I have my programming cable just sitting in here. And then all of our wires and the air tube come out the hole in the bottom. So this will connect into our LEDs. This is our power cord, and then this is our air hose. So that should be everything we need, and it all looks pretty good. I've also just set in here the foam core uh, stand that will hold our lid, and I'm not gonna glue that in just yet, but that will be next. And then this is our piece here that will sit on the top. And what I'll do is just set the lid on top of it here and I'll push it down just enough so that it pushes the foam core down to the very top of the lid okay and now I'll situate the lid so that I'm happy with it because we won't really be able to change it after that and that looks pretty good now we'll flip it over nice and gently 
Hopefully it doesn't move. Okay. Okay, so I'll just get in here with the permanent marker and kind of mark the inside of it here so I know where to glue. Now I should be able to remove this. There we go. Now that should be lined up just right for me to glue this. So I'll go ahead and lay down a little layer of glue. Our lid's all dry now. Let's go ahead and fit this in here and see if it works the way I had hoped. All right. Well, I'm glad that I didn't get rid of these parts yet because I came up with a great idea that I think will really set off the base of this. So, as you know, this originally went in like this and that is how we're going to keep it. And what we're going to do is add some of this conduit here that I got at an auto parts store. And as you can see, it fits in there just perfect. So I think all we're gonna do is cut off this very end of this here and add some conduit on the inside and add it to the outside. And this will eventually be a hose that goes all the way, uh, all the way through the entire chamber. We've got a lot of extra wire and I don't think this is going to all fit inside of our little conduit. So what I'll do is trim this off here and I've measured out just enough uh, that I can go ahead and trim this here and that should look like it's running into the conduit but it won't actually pass through it. I'm gonna go ahead and secure this with a couple of zip ties. Now that our tubing is secure in here, we can give it a test fit in the jar. Hopefully this will work. So we'll put the brain in upside down at first and just feed these tubes through here. Let's push that in there like that. How's that look? So I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments to this. Um, I'll do that off camera because I think this might take a little bit of time. So I'll make a couple of adjustments then tell you the short story in just a minute. Okay, so I've just done a little bit of wire management here. I've just added some zip ties to secure all the hoses and the wiring together. This is the plug for the LED strip. That's the in plug. These are some power wires that came onto it. Obviously these go into the air pump. And this purple wire here is actually the D out for the LED strip. So there's a D in and a D out. So they only go one way as far as their signal goes. It reads each one in succession. So the green will be the in and that says, okay, this is number one, number two, number three, and so on. And then once it gets past the second eye, this will allow LEDs 23 and up if we choose to add more. So this one is gonna be left open just for now. To glue the eyes, I'm gonna just, I've removed these and I'm gonna go ahead and just use this super glue here. Um, it's just Loctite super glue and hopefully this will keep it watertight so that we don't damage the LEDs on the inside. I'm gluing these both on the inside of the ring here and also around this ridge and I'm going pretty liberal on it with the glue and I'm also using a Q-tip once it's finished just to kind of spread it around to make sure that there's glue everywhere so hopefully that uh, that won't cause any leaks. I basically have my red paint here that I'm going to use to bloodshot the eyes 
and then I added a little bit of wood glue, the same glue I've been using to seal the EVA foam, and I've just kind of mixed it in, and it's turned kind of a pinkish color, which is expected, and I'm hoping that that will uh, create almost a little better seal. I'm not sure if this is going to work, if this is even a good idea. Maybe they'll break each other down or something, but I'm going to use that and see if that will uh, help weather the eyes. I'm going to use this toothpick here to try to apply some of the paint on the eyes. I really don't want a whole lot on there, so I'm just going to try to use this to hopefully give a little bit of detail to it. Wow, so this detailing actually looks pretty good. I'm actually kind of happy with the way that looks. So, just a reminder, I'm not a professional prop maker. I do this just because I like to learn and experiment, so I'm sure that there are people that can do this much better than I can, but to be honest with you, I'm really happy with the way that that looks. So I'm going to go with that, and I just hope that it dries well and that the water doesn't pull that paint off. Right now, our brain kind of just hangs here, and it doesn't really sit up straight like we want it. We want it to sit just about like that. And I'm not sure how well this is going to float, but just feeling this is actually kind of heavy. And we have the force of the wiring in the back there that's going to uh, make this not very stable. So I think what we're going to do is just fix it with a large wood screw. And I'm going to just place the screw in the back of the head here, something like that. It doesn't seem to require a lot of force to hold it. So hopefully that'll be a good enough solution and hopefully the screw won't really interfere with the general aesthetics of the project. All right, so we've got our base, we've got our top, and we've got our jar. Let's go ahead and put everything together and see how it all looks. Yeah, if you don't mind me saying so, I think it looks pretty good. So now all we need to do is connect up our wiring here and manage some of the cabling. Connect our air hoses, fill it up with water and give it a test. I'll just go ahead and trim off some of this extra length of the tubes. We'll connect our LED strip. Cut off the zip tie. And then I just have this one LED to connect and we can be ready to go. To connect our longer wires, I'll just use these little butt splices. For now, this is what I came up with for our wire management. So I have just this going to the LED on the bottom and then the rest of our cables are running through this conduit here. And I've left our power cord out. The hoses I needed to leave out a little bit otherwise they pinch when you uh, when you try to fold them so I may have to cut and adjust them or even get a different valve to make that work a little better but I think this will work it looks a little cleaner and we'll go with this there are some aesthetic things that we could definitely clean up but all in all I think it's looking like a pretty decent project so let's go ahead and put the code into the Arduino and give it a test drive. The code for the Arduino is actually pretty simple. I pretty much took the code provided by Mark Bramwell for the LCD library and I modified that a little bit so that I could incorporate the LED code using the LED strip code for the WS2811 RGB LEDs. And then I use the sample code for the Arduino to control a relay and just kind of mushed all of that together and came up with a very simple menu. So I'm not going to go over this in much detail right here. However, I am going to be posting this on my GitHub 
and I will leave a link for that in the description as well. Okay, so we are ready for our first test. I detected a small leak a second ago and I fixed that and I still see a little bit of water kind of dripping so I might have to trace that down. But for now, this looks really good and I am ready to give it a test. So it is plugged in. Let's hit the power and see what we get. <laughs> wow, that looks cool. Um, our LCD isn't really glowing that well, so let's... There we go. That's calm. This is excited. It's a color scheme for the eyes. This will be happy color. Uh, This is angry, sad, all right great, test one works. All right guys, well it looks like it works all right and I'm so excited that everything came together so well. Obviously, there's a little bit of room for improvement. Like I said, I'm not a professional prop maker. This is really my first attempt at doing a project like this. And I've really never used the uh, EVA foam and foam core before. So this is really a learning experience. And if you guys have any tips or suggestions on how I could improve this project, please let me know in the comments. I'd definitely love to take your advice and perhaps even make some improvements on this project sometime. I'm actually thinking about using this as some type of an interactive lamp for a home automation system as well. So there is a very good chance you'll see this in another video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you hated it and think I suck at making projects, give me a thumbs down. Either way, leave me a message in the comments below. And if you guys aren't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon that way you get notified if I make another project like this, which I definitely will sooner or later. And guys, if you really like this project and you think my channel is great, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, you can support me for as little as a dollar a month and all of those contributions go to making projects like this so that I can provide more quality videos for you guys. Anyway, guys, that's all for now. We'll see you next time.